Hey everyone, welcome. It's Rose from Rebel Leader Academy here. And tonight I want to talk to you about why so often when we look at our fiction or when we um, watch our leaders talk about the future, there tends to be this dystopian air to it. Instead of projecting onto the future a positive, abundant vision, we project the loss of our rights. We project more war, um, even more personal fear um, and, and global fear as well. You know, we look at things like Black Mirror, for example, if you're familiar with that show, I believe it's on Netflix, and they take scenarios that are sci-fi, right? But based on kind of a projection of some technologies that we have now, just a little more advanced normally, and give us um, almost fables, like warnings of what could happen, you know, given that these technologies go on into the future. So what I want to talk about is a lot of building on what we talked about before. So the idea at the base that we are moving from physical scarcity to physical abundance because of our technologies. Um, and then on the level up beyond that, that we have evolved in scarcity. So we have evolved all of what I call these scarcity based instincts that have to do with fear and keeping ourselves protected and our loved ones and keeping our empathy ring sort of small, you know, whether that's just to the individual level or our family community or the nation or the world, right? Right. So on top of that, if you think, okay, so great, understand, we evolved in scarcity, we have these scarcity instincts inside of us and all of these triggers, well, what have we done with this? So as an individual, we have all of these practices, maybe in our own life to keep us and our families safe. But on a global scale, if you think about it, well, we as humans, we have symbolic thought. And what that has allowed us to do, along with obviously develop language, is it's allowed us to create agreements with each other that are, if you really think about it, totally in our imaginations, in our minds. So things like law, um, the way we have, and I, I'm just going to say it, the way we have dogma in religion, um, how we have structured our economic system, how we exchange goods and services, how we have distribution systems. All of these things are just spoken words. They have meaning. We agree to them. And then we decide, or rather we are indoctrinated in a sense from the time we're children into acknowledging that these ways of living are truth. So if you take laws, for example, these are, this is an easy one to get around. You know, somebody at some point made up these laws. Every law that we have at some point was made up what, by one person or a group of people or whatever. So they're written down. We say that everybody has to abide by them in this jurisdiction. And everybody who's born in that jurisdiction abides by them, right? They're taught to do that. You have a law that says you don't kill people. Well, you don't kill people, right? Otherwise, you're punished, yada, yada. But the problem is that all of these laws and all of these um, modes of living and ways in which we interact with each other have all come out of our scarcity-based thinking. So they've all come out of this fear and protectionistic thinking. And if we are to transition into something based on a world of abundant resources, uh, and we then have to move into our higher thinking, which is the newest part of our brain, as I explained in the last video, then we have to create brand new agreements with each other and ways that we're going to live. So think about these as global systems. So whereas we had these global systems of um, scarcity based in law, economies, things like that. Now, as we transition over, we actually have to transition our thinking in terms of the systems that we're going to create. And every system that we create is simply based on how we agree, whether consciously or I'll say tacitly, because normally people don't think about these things. It's not like we sit down and we go, oh yeah, sure. I agree to abide by this law. No, we're just expected to. And we take that on as a reality. So if we're going to transition into an abundance, abundance-based world, then all of those structures that are overarching in our imaginations have to also change. 
but what's the real problem with this? Well, the problem is we don't have a training system. We don't have education. We don't even have a guideline of what it would look like to be a human living in a world of abundant resources and having to make decisions that are truly based on understanding our connection to everyone and everything on the planet. So understanding the real consequences of our actions, not just on an individual level, but the consequences to everyone on the planet, to everything on the planet, right? So this gets into the whole idea of sustainability and, and creating, um, creating ways and agreements of living that keep us in sustainability with the planet, with the other life, all of it on the, on the planet, as well as with other humans. So we have a lot of forces right now that are in transition that are hopefully going to, in a way, force us to use this higher brain function, to go into our compassionate natures, to move really from this idea of protectionistic competition into cooperative systems. So that's a huge way of shifting out of this scarcity-based, fear-based system. Now, again, I, I want to emphasize that I'm not demonizing the way we've been and the way we are because it has gotten us here and we have had to live in, in circumstances of scarcity. Like that has been our reality until we've created technologies that can move us out of that paradigm, which exist. So now that we have created these technologies and we can choose to utilize them better, now we have to think about, okay, great, let's pretend that we don't have to expend so much energy on making sure we have food and water and a house and um, heat or air conditioning, whatever the case may be, right? Let's pretend that everything we need to survive and even beyond survive, but really be comfortable as the human animal that we are. What do we do with ourselves? Now, what are we going to agree to? We don't have to fight each other anymore for these things. If, if we have a world in which, let's say, the countries, which are, again, one of those, those systems that are just made up, right? Countries don't actually exist. They're just figments of our imagination that we all agree to. Um, there are no lines on the world designating, oh, this is here and that's that, other than, I guess, you could say continents themselves. So given that we recognize that these things are fictitious and that we have the ability to change them, we have to move people out of their scarcity thinking into a very different, abundant, cooperative way of thinking so that we even have a chance of creating completely new global systems that we agree to live by and that can actually be sustainable. And remember that idea that I said, if you take the emerging technologies and the power of those things that we are creating right now, and you pair them with our old scarcity, fear-based instincts, that really will lead to annihilation. Versus if we take those same technologies and we pair them with our cooperative nature, our compassionate nature, our consequential thinking, and more evolved way of thinking, then we have the ability to potentially create what we've always considered, quote, utopia. And not in some kind of like very woo woo sense, but in a sense where no, now our tacit agreements with each other, our laws are now based on, we understand that what I do has an impact on you and you and you and everybody else on the planet. We understand that we only have this one planet and we are all connected. So we have to take care of each other. Like this is a very practical thing. You know, it's a very, how can I put this? It's not, it's not just an emotional look like longing, but this is something we actually have to move into this new paradigm if we're going to survive. So one of my favorite quotes is by Albert Einstein. And I wrote down because I always mess up quotes. So it's the idea that we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. So really take that in because scarcity-based, fear-based, what have we created? We've created everything that exists now, every way in which we live now. And we have to totally shift our thinking into a completely different set of principles 
to create these new systems of abundance in which we can consciously use the technologies to create circumstances that foster peace, circumstances that foster human ingenuity and true creativity and true individuality. So I started this off with that question, why is it that every time we project in fiction even into the future, we're creating these dystopian visions? Well, think about that because it's all we know. Right now, it's all we know how to create. And we have these people that are creating these things like Black Mirror um, as warnings, right? Legitimate warnings for us saying, hey, our natures as they exist, the guiding principles we've used to survive, if we continue on this path with the technologies that we have, it's not good. It's horrible. However, I want to offer for you guys another vision. I'm going to offer you the idea that if we're cognizant about our natures, and we also know that there's this burgeoning other part of our cognition that's happening. It's like it, it's growing in us. Like we're evolving into this. As our technologies evolve and as, as we can create better and better, better technologies, we're evolving into this very different kind of human. So for me, the more people we can understand this and transition themselves as individuals into an abundance-based thinking, a cooperative-based thinking, a consequence-based thinking, then we can start inventing something that's not just to be, something that's at least closer to a utopian vision in which everyone, every single person on the planet has everything they need to do much more than survive, but to truly, truly thrive as a human being, as a creative, amazing, compassionate, ingenious individual and species that we can be and that we are. We just have to create those globalized systems that foster those aspects of us to move forward. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And, uh, and we'll continue this discussion at one higher level in a couple days when I'm back. Okay, thanks so much again. Bye.